Welcome to the Autonomous Collection or Collective. Uh, what it is, is a group of people who were brought together by a brilliant um, uh, writer and, and podcaster during COVID. And we have morphed and uh, gotten bigger and better. And we hope to entertain you. In the links, in the description, you will find a link to the newsletter. And we invite you to join us and uh, participate in some shows. Tonight, we have Twilight Zone, where Professor John will break break down uh, all the actors and how much it costs uh, uh, to produce a segment of the Twilight Zone from the 60s. Later tonight at 11 uh, Eastern, we have uh, two people walking across Canada uh, to bring awareness to Indigenous uh, men who have died. And tomorrow we have uh, Star Trek. So it's a lot of fun. Lane, can you tell us who we have on the show tonight, please? Uh, Jim. <laughs> okay. Let me you, see. you're on it. Yeah, yeah. Martha. Martha. I, sh I should have done it. I, I, you know, should have been Martha. You, then Jim. Ladies first. Uh, maybe I should tell the audience we got a lot, of, a lot of people around the world. That's like, me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay okay quit talking though uh, what's repeat? we have people from britain norway uh mexico canada the united states of america uh sometimes india and sometimes uh spain when joe's in, joe's there and we'll bring on joe hi martha hi jim hi hi wally how are you guys doing hey guys <laughs> we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna bring in joe he's gonna be our asmr guy today and okay you, what is that i uh, <laughs> turning asmr is uh silent cooking while other people are in discussion Ooh. so i uh will typically make a well, i will always make a 100 percent vegetarian meal and try to change it up every time. We focus on uh, all natural foods, no, none of the fake meat products, no animal products whatsoever, and uh, try to show a variety of different cooking techniques. And I usually don't have any recipes. I just have a vague idea what I'm going to make. I'll usually make two to three dishes, and we see where we go from there. And if anybody has any questions, you can always interrupt me and ask, or I may interrupt and tell you what's going on. And we can share tips and tricks and whatnot. The, the ingredients look good. So what are you making uh, tonight, Joe? Yeah, so, well, since we've got Martha and Jim here and they're focused on uh, diabetic activism, I decided to do a diabetic kitchen ASMR. So this is uh, a... Uh, hopefully diabetic friendly vegetarian meal we've got uh, one of the key things about uh, diabetes is is uh eating if you're going to eat grains then they should be whole grains like short grain brown rice it's slower to digest short grain brown rice is a very nice and nutty flavor and holds its texture really nicely and it's fairly simple simple dish um but it's, since it's a complex carbohydrate, it takes uh, longer for you to digest, and it's easier uh, on your um, your body than uh, refined white rice or white flowers and and such. Is that a I sure you know? Is that you know, a ASM Oh, awesome! Go ahead, Lee. Go ahead. Do you know, ASMR is supposed to have a, like a hint of eroticism about it. Um, is it knows it. There's always a bit of a, oh, I'm only wrapping in this paper. Well, I can. Is that yeah, a whiskey, whiskey. Is that Can a we see how we want your head, your head wave is, Joe? I can. Oh, yeah. Stroke our main dish here. Uh, there we is... go. Okay, you need to stop. Whoa. You need to stop Whoa. that. Is that a slab of butter in the middle, uh, Joe? Is that <laughs> your, your erotic... So, uh, so that's a this, gourd, right? Or is that a melon or a gourd? Well, it's it's a fruit. It's a called the bitter gourd, bitter gourd or bitter melon. There's a few different varieties depending on right. where they are. So Jim, do you so, eat do you eat gourds, Jim? Would you eat a gourd? 
of course I would. That's a gourd? That's, I think so. <laughs> that is a I, gourd. I've never seen a gourd. Uh, you know, I've never, I don't think I've ever tasted a gourd like that. Uh, but uh, I would uh, love to try. It looks uh, like, it looks like a kind of a, uh, something that would come out of a sloth after, uh, you know, about three months of sleeping and eating. But I like it. I, I think it, that's what appeals you, to me. Well, you might want to hold your breath on that one. It is called bitter melon or bitter gourd for a reason. For me, it's borderline inedible. <laughs> it's a very acquired taste. Really? But apparently, it's really popular in South Asian, Southeast Asian Chinese dishes, um, and in uh, Ayurvedic and uh, Chinese medicine. Um, it has, it's a diuretic. It has... Uh, it's astringent properties. It's they juice it, they fry it, they cook, they saute it, they boil it. It is un it is probably one of the most bitter things you'll ever eat and not die from. So it is an acquired taste. <laughs> but, you don't you don't you don't know you don't know who I've dated in the past. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to email you that uh, uh, that after uh, after he's done cooking it. Lane, what do you so, think of the bitter melon? He's not selling it, is he? I <laughs> and also, I am given as my name as chairman of the board this week. You should be chairman. Did I say of the it's board? an acquired taste. <laughs> so the, the reason why I, I chose this to make right. is twofold. I've yet to get my kids to be able to stomach a couple bites, and since I'm doing uh, diabetic uh, dishes this evening. Bitter melon is very uh, well known for radically reducing your your um, glucose levels. So it potentially has great effect for combating issues around diabetes. Um, one note about that is that it's so strong that you might have problems if you're on certain medications. So you, you should talk to your doctor if you're going to consume it. I see but, why why it takes you an hour to cook anything, Joe. Uh, well, uh, oh, I haven't even started. So yeah, I th I thought I would do uh, we'll sa we'll saute some bitter melon with tofu and red pepper, and then I'll make a I'll also saute lettuce. We got we got lots of green today. I always like to eat great green vegetables. Dark green leafy is better, but I've got uh, Roman salad here. And we'll saute that because it's much juicier when you cook lettuce than eat it raw. So I'll uh, saute that with fermented black beans. And mm. uh, I soaked some cashews. So we got some extra protein there. And they're nice. And, and uh, they had a little different, different texture with the, the juiciness of the uh, the lettuce. And then uh, next up there, we've got the famed carrot. We'll make a quick pickle with carrot and the, what I could call the butt squash, another funky vegetable. That, there's the ASMR right there, Joe. <laughs> there's the ASMR right there, butt squash and carrot. Can I go wrong with that, Mara? This is called chaote. It's, uh, again, South Asian, um, East Asian, uh, Central American. Can uh, you, uh, can you, can you can will have it. It's similar you, to jicama. So it, it looks like a pear with a butt, but it's, it's actually a squash. And it has one big seed in it, and it's very crunchy. You can either cook it or do it raw. So I'm going to um, julienne it or something and then salt it really quickly. We'll have a, uh, a pickle. So we've got pickle, so salad, cooked salad, and some, <laughs> some bitterness. And then I'm going to cook the, um, the brown rice as the main component. So, so that melon good? is... Is that is that melon good to eat, Joe? Does it taste nice? 
Uh, let's just say it's an acquired taste. <laughs> I'll, I'll take, I'll eat it after the show or who's when gonna, we're finished. Who's going to eat this stuff? Your kids, your kids hate you. <laughs> Poison your own family, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, good on you. Move out. <laughs> good on you. Well, let's, uh, good luck, Joe. It's about, about is, Thank you. This is like somebody trying to eat a blowfish. And, and not dying, I think, <laughs> is what it is. But yeah, no, very, very similar. That is, that is the actually that is the first impression trying bitter gourd that you get is yeah. that oh my god, this is poison. <laughs> but, but people love it. People really love it. Good on, good on you. So um, while you cook, we'll talk to Jim and Martha. How, how are you guys? How are you guys? One moment. Walter, you need to bring them into the scene. You have to oh, share a stream with all of the people who are speaking. They are here. Right now, I believe it's... We are oh. here? Yeah. Yeah, they oh, are. Joe, jo, you know, uh, you, you're... But there. There we go. I think you just... You're looking at the wrong tablet, Joe. So... Okay. We'll, 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 do, we'll do the IT work tonight. So you oh, just... Go. I've had enough of it all day. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> uh you might want to mute yourself while you're cooking but up to you yeah i will and if you have any questions just uh, stop me and ask there will be some questions i have no doubt yeah. i'm your temporary host martha and J jim i don't know if i can do this for too many weeks so but it's great to see you guys martha you're looking as beautiful as ever and your compadre oh, you. jim <laughs> jim earl you're you're looking kind of pretty tonight myself <laughs> so well thank you <laughs> <laughs> is is this a little too loud? Is this uh, breaking up this shirt? Is it the colors breaking up? Yeah, I, it looks nice. It, it, yeah. it, it really does. Is that a main main special shirt? Perhaps. It, it, yeah, this is where all the schlubs here in Maine wear. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'm wearing Canadian clothing tonight. Uh, it's not red green, but uh, it'll do. So, and we have. Oh, do you guys got fires out in your state at all? That's what I was going to ask. We had a um, a hotel burn down nearby uh, a couple of days ago, and the the fire spread um, across the the Route One bypass, which is the Route One which runs along ninety five north, um, and it spread into the brush. So there were, I think it was a six alarm fire a couple of days ago in Kittery, Maine. Uh, uh, yeah, we got a we we have a lot of barn burning here uh, because of the crack labs they explode. There's a lot of that Math. and uh, Math. yeah, people Math. setting moose on fire when, when you and then they run around and get the clam bakes gone wild. So, so yeah. Susan Susan Collins didn't own that hotel, did she? Did she do it for insurance reasons? Maybe uh, could be. Um... We'll have to yeah, check in with her and and then to find out. Well, we've yeah. got oh, in, in a... my my province we have 123 fires burning now. <laughs> 20, 20 wow. out of control. Eleven thousand evacuees out of out of there, and the western provinces are all burning down. So, uh, if you need some land cheap, um, you come on up here. <laughs> hey, that's a good idea. Take advantage of it. You know, <laughs> you it's uh. Well. The real estate's hot. That's you know that's, here, you know here we had a you know, many people don't know this about Maine. You know people come here during fall to see the uh, the leaves change color and everything, and somebody uh, we were told by an expert on a tour of one of the at the trolley museum that in 1947 half the state burned down in a forest fire and so most of the pine trees were were burned down and they were taken over with uh well elm and and uh, other types Cotton of trees maybe i believe so i don't know this, so that's why that's why you have this, this big uh uh fall color change here in, in maine because uh, all those trees took over hmm. and uh other boring uh other boring things i could 
point out about Maine. This has been a go ahead and ask a main a main tid tidbit by Jim. <laughs> I can see why you're a, a really acclaimed writer, Jim. That was well done. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> well <done. laughs> um, did you did you guys have something planned for us, or am I wrong? Well, we uh, I believe so. We have uh, I think Martha Stewart is going to uh, talk about uh, some a couple of things okay. that I can't remember. But Can she'll. I... Sure, go ahead. I'll take myself out of the picture then, and uh, you guys go ahead. Ooh, there's Martha. Hello, Martha Stewart. Uh, Hello. Hello there, Jim. Um, <laughs> as I am sure it must be um, for Joe in Norway, dinner time at the Martha Stewart compound is traditionally a time of of good cheer, um, the sound of laughter ringing throughout the house and finally sitting down to the joyous feast while your demented mother asks, which one of you cunts has the butter? <laughs> well, if you're like me, a lot of you are petrified at the thought of running out of your favorite Cabernet during a meal. Well, fret no more. I'll show you how to make a simply superb toilet wine. Yes, toilet wine. It's not just for prison anymore. All you need are four McDonald's ketchup packets, an expired quart of orange juice, a slice of moldy bread, and 12 ounces of your best morning urine. You see, morning urine acts as a sugar base to interact with the bread yeast. Seal them all together in a one-gallon trash bag, shake it fervently, and hide it in the top tank of your toilet. Be sure to let out gas fermentation every few hours, or the guard, I mean your neighbor, will know something's up and beat you mercilessly with their nightstick. And, as you can clearly see from my spread in Sports Illustrated, toilet wine also acts as a great preservative. It's no coincidence. I stopped aging the year I was incarcerated. My face is tighter than the strings of on Liberace Steinway. Toilet wine. It's perfect for every occasion. Or no occasion at all. Goes well with dog, cat, or even that unlucky delivery man who happens to get stuck in your bear trap again for the third time this week and it's only Monday. Isn't that right, former Governor May of, of Maine, Paula Page? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm having uh, some schmuck is in front of my uh my video, but yeah, you're goddamn right, Martha. Toilet wine is Maine's biggest source of income, besides toilet crack. Look, I'm here with uh, Senator Susan Collins of Maine to announce our endorsement of Donald Trump for the White House thing there, right, Susan? I'm Senator Susan Collins of Maine, where children make voodoo dolls out of potatoes and crush the skulls of lobsters with their bare thighs. I'm very proud once again to endorse Donald Trump as the candidate for supreme leader, I mean president, of the proud fiefdom of the United States. Why? Because working class Americans deserve a strong, unstable man to talk down to them like their children and tell them what to do with their waginas. Isn't that right, former governor of Maine, Paula Page? That's, uh, that's white. That's very white, uh, Susan, except for the rich people. Believe me, you don't want specimens like uh, you and I making kids. Last time I knocked, knocked Susan up, a creature with a pouch crawled out of her hoo-ha and tried to fuck a wombat. You shouldn't speak that way about Shorty. He's our son. Okay, but I swear the fucking thing had a pouch. Oh, what Paul is trying to say is a second, third, fourth, and fifth term for Donald Trump in the White House 
should help ensure a balanced budget. That's absolutely right, Susan. And as I said as much last year when I announced my failed campaign for governor, governor, go, uh, at governor. Scarlet, governor, go, for, for governor at Scarlet, governor. <clears throat> doing it in what? As for governor of Scarlet Begonia's Infected Clam Shack and Moose Bath Kitchen here in Brunswick. Brunswick. <clears throat> Brunswick. The best way to lower this country's expenses and cost of living is to lower this country's quality of life. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> and 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 if I were or was America's supreme leader, I mean governor, I mean president, I would cut everything. You know, I cut uh, stuff like your, your oxygen tubes, your electricities, your gas, your heatings, your food stamps and Medicaid and social securities. Meals on wheels, postage stamps, and that uh, swissy fossy stuff in the toilet there. What's that called again? Uh, water. Oh, yeah, 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 water. Yeah, that. Speaking of water, I'm very, very disappointed with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and their recent evidence-based findings regarding the stupid and annoying whales off our coast. Let me make this clear as a Maine snowstorm. Maine's lobster industry has never killed a whale. Oh, sure, maybe we maimed or tortured a few, ripped off a few fins, shred their skin with rusty lobster cages, poisoned them with human sewage, blinded them with kerosene, and crammed fidget spinners down their blowholes. But kill them? Give me a break! Yeah, that's right. That's right, Susan. They love having fidget spinners uh, put down the blowholes. Whales also love getting tangled in lobster lines and drowning in raw sewage. Maine has always had the best sewage, by the way. And because this is Maine, it's all lovingly handcrafted by pasty old men and women patiently awaiting death while complaining about the price of donuts. My point is this. Whales are way too big to get to get stuck in one of those little lobster traps. And thirdly, for too long, for far too long, whales have brutalized our state's coast in search of sunbathing mainers, catching them drunk and unawares on the beaches, smoking lucky strikes, and screaming at their doughy children. We must protect Mainers from the dreaded whale and protect our farm-raised sloppy salmon. Oh, yeah, there's nothing like Maine's sloppy, sloppy salmon, Susan. You know, as you remember, when I was go back, when I was governor of Maine, I delivered on my campaign promise to improve Maine's business climate. How? By destroying Maine's environmental climate. If you elect me again, I'll raise the sea level so high they'll drown every fucking moose in this state. And that's my <laughs> that's my promise to you, you son of a bitch socialist cocksuckers. All right? I'm very proud to announce I'm sponsoring a new bill requiring two-minute two minute waiting period before anyone can buy a gun in Maine. I believe it's very important we allow prospective mass murderers the time to pull out their credit cards. Oh, that's a real good idea there, Susan. It's important that they have two minutes before they can put their hands on a weapon of mass uh, k killing uh, because they need to be able to pay for it with that credit card <laughs> thing there. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> oh, God. 
Ah, I need some. Uh, Are you okay? Yeah, I What's need a drink. What's the matter with you? I got a throat condition here. Uh, Do you have the COVID? I don't have the COVID, but I got the, boy, I got lucky strikes. <laughs> uh, I got I, five packs a day. You've got fine tobacco. Yeah, I've had five packs. Uh, boy, I've had uh, maybe 10 packs today. That's a lot, huh? Well, anyway, <laughs> I have to go feed Pepper, my dog. It's time for her endangered beluga whale tenders. I've been Senator Susan Collins of Maine, and I'm full of clams. And I've been a uh, former governor of Maine, Paula Page. Uh, this uh, impression really relied on uh, people knowing what he sounds like. I know I realize it's a regional impression, so... Uh, Maybe only a couple of uh, thousand people know what Paula Page sounds like, but he really honestly does sound a lot like this. Wonderful. You're yeah. wonderful. Oh, you're, you're even better, Susan. Thank you for... Oh, uh, we love you, Paul. Th thank you for, uh, for, for uh, uh, endorsing me during the last election because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a lot of gumption and I, I, I routinely... I routinely challenge my uh, my detractors to duels, and that's what we need more more of here in Maine. I said, stay off my goddamn lawn, stay off my fucking property. That's all I ask. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Paula Page, everyone, former governor of Maine. Uh, just you, 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 you two. Please don't have any more children. That's that's all I can say. <laughs> you know, the damn thing in a pouch. It had a pouch. It had a pouch. <laughs> you know. Oh Jesus Christ! I don't get it. What happened there? Something yeah. happened. Right. Um. Let's let's uh let's check in with Joe and see how he's doing. How are you doing today, Joe? You're muted right now. Oh, there he hey is. There. Oh, there. Hey there. Yeah, I just got finished making the uh, pickles. Pick pickle. Okay. So that that was the chahote, the butt squash, right? And uh, carrot, with okay. um, a couple of teaspoons of salt, rice vinegar, and I put some uh, some chili powder. Spice it up. Chili. Oh powder. yeah. If you want, you could add sesame oil, sesame seed. I'm toasting some it's sesame seeds here. You could put some garlic if you like, and uh, basically do this the first up top and right. then by the time you get to dinner finish with dinner then you'll have a quick pickle ready what do you got in and the, the rice yeah oh uh, this is sesame seed i'm toasting mm -hmm. and i use a pressure cooker almost twice a day two three times four times a week it just depends on what i'm cooking but uh, for brown rice in particular the pressure cooker or instant pot works really really well it's environmentally conscious it basically cuts your cooking time down to a third it uh, uh, makes you can cook beans in 20 minutes That's like um, garbanzos take 18 to 20 minutes after they've been soaked um, this brown rice would normally take 50 minutes it takes 25 basically so it's uh, they're really well worth it and they double as a uh, saute or or um, uh, a pot that you boil noodles in. So it's a really functional functional uh, tool for the kitchen. So is that gourd as bitter as uh, Paul LePage? Do you think? Ooh, I, they're in <laughs> competition. <laughs> yeah, I don't eat freaking gourds. <laughs> you know, I'm not I'm not no pansy gourd eater. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Martha and Jim. That was great. <laughs> Paul loves my clam loaf. Your clam loaf? <laughs> oh, my right. God. Maybe sometime I'll come on and give you a recipe for my clam loaf. Okay. I got something to play for you guys. Do you know Candace Taylor? Yes, Taylor. Uh... She, so she was elected a Georgia GOP district chair. 
And she refuses to participate in the insanity of accepting that Joe Biden is president. Oh, so would you would you like to uh, see a clip of this lady? Remember, sure. she, she's a GOP person, right? So, OK, no one elected Joe Biden to be president of the United States. That did not happen. Very few totally mentally insane people voted for Joe Biden. People did not vote for him. You don't vote for a man who is not cognitively present. You don't vote for a man that stays in his basement that comes out to have a rally with six people socially distanced. That you don't win right. You don't win a country over with that. And for them to think we believe it, and for people to call him President Biden, which I do not because he didn't win. When you do that, you participate in the insanity. Just like whenever I say it's okay for people to cut off their genitals and um, as children and give their children um, hormones that is opposite of how God created them, I'm participating in their insanity and their gender identity disorder. It's the same thing. We've got to stop this insanity, this perpetuating society. It is causing people who were normal to become mentally ill. It is not only something that is learned behavior mm -hmm. and repetitive behavior, it is demonic. Mm -hmm. It is evil. And I do feel like we're in Sodom and Gomorrah. I wasn't being funny about that. No. I seriously do. Uh, so my question to you is, would you give kids opposite hormones? I'd, I'd give her opposite hormones, yeah. He <laughs> sounds mentally ill. I don't think I don't think those lips were uh, what God gave her. But what was it? Full of silicone or well, I think, I think Martha's got a new character if she becomes a little more famous. Not you, Martha. That See that GOP Marjorie lady. Taylor Greene's little cousin or something from the South. Where's she from? From Georgia. Georgia, yeah. Yeah, she's yeah. GOP. GOP chairperson. Um oh, chair. that ain't you no know, going yes. on. Surprise me. <laughs> so, yeah, it takes all kinds in the world, right? That's, that's amazing. Right. That's, so, that's... Yeah, bless her heart is right. <laughs> so who's bless the governor? Her little heart. Who's the governor of Maine nowadays? Like, Paul's gone, right? That's uh, Janet Mills. Uh, okay. She's kind of a uh, uh, moderate. She's uh, kind of Republican light, uh, Democratic moderate uh she's she's for health care and insulin payments i uh, it's hard to tell you know you know what they did two years ago both parties passed a uh, bipartisan bill on to give poor people which consists of two hundred thousand or more people of this state of one million point one mm -hmm. uh citizens give those poor people comprehensive medical care dental care i mean dental care and so they pat themselves on the back and uh you know for two years and for two years we've been trying to find out how do we get this dental care because not not one dentist in this state will take it so that's something she doesn't talk about you know, she doesn't I've, have her, her office doesn't even answer her phone about that issue. Um, we've been trying to get in touch with their uh, office and or someone, even anyone from anywhere to discuss this issue with us. And uh, nobody returns our calls. Wow. Yeah. yeah. 200,000 people. They, they ran, you know, politicians on both sides, so-called both sides of the aisle ran on it. They've, they congratulated themselves, pat themselves on the back. Uh, uh, have so you tried using Susan Collins' voice when you call in? <laughs> that would be a good idea. We've never done that. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> this is Paula Listen Page. Listen up, everybody. Yeah. Listen up. Oh, <laughs> get your mind out of okay. the gutter. <laughs> this is, I, I, uh, you, uh, Governor Mills. Doesn't deserve a second uh, term there because she wants everybody to have fucking teeth, and you, everybody's a gummer here in uh, in Maine. A gummer. We, we gum. Eat we, your potatoes and shut up. We yeah. Uh, we gum gum our uh, mashed potatoes and our, our fruits. 
and uh, I don't eat fruit, of course. No, but you, we uh, gourds, starch, 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 mm. and uh, and uh, and moose mutton, and clam <laughs> loaf, clam loaf, moose mutton, and uh, maple syrup, and beluga whale liver. Okay, raw. Someone say gourd. Yeah, let's let's take a look oh, at yeah. this thing. What the heck is it? Okay. So this I'm is the bitter gourd. That thing. Mm, good eating. You definitely, you definitely want to scoop out all of the seeds, all the insides. And, and does it have a smell the, to it? Does it smell like anything? It smells like dirt. <laughs> <laughs> You want to get a bunch of the, the white inner inner part. Try to get all the way down to the, the, the wall there, because a lot of the bitterness is in with the seeds. Mm -hmm. Next time you should it's do a, scr still... a scratch and sniff uh, episode. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're working on the Zoom smell vision. So does anybody grow this or is this just the wild grows in the wild? How do you think I got it? It occurs I... naturally after a flight from Thailand all the way to Oslo. And up here. Well, if it was growing in my garden, I'd probably kill it on purpose. So it is like uh, intimidating. Okay. Pardon me, Lane. Looks like the fucking thing fell from space. Yeah. Horrendous. Space, space gourd. So do you lovely, apparently. do you do anything with the guts, um, Joe? Oh no, I, I throw them out. You throw it out, know. so it's a waste. Yeah. So uh, you're not brave enough to do something with the guts. I mean, we got to recycle. Can uh, you plant the it, seeds? It's yeah. bitter no, enough. No, don't don't plant the seeds. <laughs> don't plant the seeds. <laughs> Is that an old Viking dish? <laughs> From Thailand, so. yeah. <laughs> do you get rid of the? Do you get rid of the seeds, Joe? Because they're not as bitter as the bitter melon, or more bitter than the bitter That's melon? Well, they're, they're more bitter. That's why I scrape the inside very well. Uh -huh. So similar, similar to uh, chilies. If you cut open a chili, you want to take out the veins and the seeds. You know, that's where a lot of all the heat resides, or not, depending on how much you want. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks, Joe. We'll leave you to your no bitter, bitter gourd. It's a nice uh, chopping knife you have there, uh, yeah, that's Joe. Nice. Uh, looks a bit uh, oh, sharp. Sharp. It's a zwilling. Uh, the Germans always know how to make the best yeah. things that cut yeah. up things. It's, uh, it's hefty. Um. Would you you guys take some questions from the audience? Are you okay with that, uh, Jim? Oh, if they're if they're okay with it. Oh yeah. All right. The, the question is um, like, what the hell was that? What are you doing? Sure. Right. Yeah. Well, I I wanted to do five questions like you used to write, I think, and uh, we only got one. So. Uh, oh, the five questions. <laughs> yeah. All right. Is Travis here? Uh, he was Travis. Travis. Well, that son of a gun. He says, I got to ask a question of Jim and uh, Jim and Martha, and then I don't see him here. Um, well, while we're waiting for Travis to come back to ask that. Uh, well, we're not going to wait for him, Joe. Oh, we're not. <laughs> I thought go, it was. Very go ahead, important. John. Go ahead, John. We'll give you the I, floor. I, yeah, I just wanted perhaps if uh, Martha could clarify, what is a, a, a moose muffin? Is, it, is that what you were referring to earlier? Uh a moose muffin. Yeah, what did you say? Moose muffin or a moose moose? Oh, merkin. Oh, merkin. <laughs> <Moose, laughs> yeah, what is that? <laughs> well, <laughs> Jim, why don't you explain? <laughs> well, you, if this is Maine, and uh, people have had a lot of experience with moose, and uh, it gets very lonely up here, and they become very familiar with moose. And uh, oh, they, that... they make merkins out of moose. And um, 
it's a traditional it's like burlwood uh sculptures it's it's kind of like a t- <laughs> traditional main handicraft that's p- passed down from generation to generation see and is that where the um where, where those creatures came from with the pouches or was that strictly from the love child of susan collins and uh paula page I think that was from uh, Paula Page and, and Susan Collins, but uh, but they are native to uh, Australia. The uh, but we do have <laughs> we do every continent does have a possum, uh, a pouch bearing marsupial, I believe. Do you have one in Norway, uh, Joe? Well, you don't have to answer. I don't think oh, we, do. we we've got loads of moose or elk. Do you have possum? I'm not sure, actually. Uh, I'm an immigrant, so I, I, I'm just recently minted. You got wolverines. Do you have deer deer ticks and Lyme disease? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, we've got a problem with that. Yeah, quite bad, quite bad. Right. Yeah, we do here too. Uh, this year it's going to be especially bad with the heat, and uh, the ticks are all moving north. So. Used yeah. to be a southern thing, but now no, it's coming in. And you got a Lyme disease problem. Is that that island? Is Lyme Island off your off Maine? Is is that true, Martha? You no, would know. No, I, I think Lyme is in a a town in Connecticut, uh, where I think Lyme disease first began. I'm not sure though. Uh, that's what I think. All right. I'd have to verify that with my fact checker. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not cool when we bring experts on, you know, like we just wing it. So, so this yeah. is great. Well, I'll wing it. <laughs> That's Try my off guess. Off topic, yeah. off topic yeah. tip here with the yeah. green onions or uh, spring onions. If you, oh. when you slice them to release more flavor, you can crush them a bit and they'll break the cell walls and release more flavor. You just do that. Tap it really nicely. More flavor. Simple, easy peasy. Uh, if I find, it, I find when I break my cell walls, uh, it does it releases more flavor as well? <laughs> Travis, are you, are you there, Travis? You wanted to ask a question, Travis? Uh yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you sir. Hear me? Yeah, Hang on. Uh, I got yeah. tornado sirens over here. Let me find a different wow. spot. Oh, wow. Travis is from. Texas. Where are you, Travis? North Texas. Wow. Ooh, wow. There we go. That North Texas uh, tornado knocked out my internet. Is, is <laughs> kind of a, that's a strong tornado. Yeah. Can you ask that question again, uh, Travis? <laughs> Don't mind, buddy. Can we hear the answer? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Travis asked if uh, Louis C.K. ever pulled out his penis in front of me. And I said, define pull out. And uh, and then the conversation went on from there, and you know, no, he he never did. He never did that. All right, I got a lame question for you then, if if you don't mind. It's pretty lame. What's the uh, most embarrassing um, position you've been caught uh, caught in wearing assless chops? If you don't mind. Uh, Well, I'm. I really, you know, there's so many levels to that question, and yeah. it's very complex and involved. I don't think I could do justice, uh, give a full answer here on this uh, short time that we're allotted here. Okay. Well, the answer I have is in the arms of John Stewart. That was your most compromising position. So, well, he never touched me, uh, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's too bad i wish he had because then i would have had more reason to sue him but that's another story that is another story that's right um is there anything else you guys want to talk to us about or would you like to stay with the and we'll bring on the professors we uh we could uh stick around for a few more minutes we have to eat as well to come yeah up, but jo- i Joel- love this Joel, email you his dish. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Yeah. (laughs) I got a couple more tips here for you. 
Um, sure. sure galloping it's always, for me. Since I'm going to be preparing several things at once, it's good to put your uh, all of your ingredients in, in order on a plate, separate plate. So I got the two two separate dishes here, the stir fry salad, and then the, the bitter gourd, tofu, and, and paprika. So we're all set to go with um, stir frying now. And uh, I'll, uh, I think I'll be demonstrating a few different ways to use the wok. I have to think about it. Dude, We're all like a one pot dish. You can blanch, you can deep fry, stir fry, you can dry fry. It's very, very uh, flexible. It's like a brush cooker. So, Jim, Martha, would this be some? What, like, okay, you're vegetarians, you're diabetic. Is there something like that you, you avoid, or, or what's your diet consist of uh, like that? Are you, are you very careful what you eat? Well, go ahead, Martha. I am now. I I never used to be in, until I um I had a blocked artery in my heart and I had to drastically change my diet and stop eating everything fried and all of the white sugar and flour and and um I feel a lot better now that I have. I I quit drinking caffeine, but I used to eat whatever I wanted figuring oh i can just take insulin it won't matter mm -hmm. but um it did and i found out the hard way uh that you really shouldn't do that uh i need to i i eat like a well i always ate like a kid i thought and you know eating whatever i wanted and um most of it sugar um which they say doesn't cause your diabetes but i'm not so sure anymore um but now, uh, yeah, now we eat a pretty healthy diet. Um, lots of fruits and vegetables and raw things like uh, nuts. Um, and... Have you tried whole grains like brown rice? Yes, um, definitely brown rice uh, is not as bad as, you know, having white rice. Uh, I'm really a fussy eater. Uh, oh. so yeah and i i think recently i i figured out that I, I can't really eat gluten so i i kind of i'm really limited in what i can eat so pretty much i eat salad every day salad and bananas and apples and nuts and raisins and in between i'd highly whatever. recommend quinoa quinoa because it's super easy to prepare uh, yeah that's 15, good too. 15 minutes to cook and you can eat it either warm or cold tossed in salad so if you take like uh, like uh, these vegetables that looks or, good or cucumber dice it up cook your quinoa put it on a tray when it's finished to cool off toss it with salad dressing and, and uh, these crunchy vegetables maybe tomatoes some seeds or nuts it's really a nice quick dish you get the extra protein of the of the uh, seeds and the, the quinoa. Um, yeah, that looks, looks good. nice. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Dave, you had your hand up. Did you have a question for uh, Martha and Jim? Oh, I just wanted to know if you ever tried uh, cinnamon and if it had any effect on uh, A1C. Uh, yeah, it does when you mix it with sugar, which is the best <laughs> way. <laughs> My mom did that too, yeah. yeah. Cinnamon, what? sugar, and, and toast. Oh, yeah, cinnamon toast. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I love to put cinnamon. Cinnamon's nice on uh, apple slices. It's kind of <laughs> like a, almost like eating apple pie if you close your eyes. <laughs> have, have you ever tried it on bitter gourd? Uh, no, no, never. Help. No, but that, that might be something. Throw bitter some gourd. cinnamon on that, uh, Joe, and, and tell us how <laughs> We'll I do. heard maple syrup too is another thing that supposedly is good for your blood sugar, but I'm I'm not so sure. Maple about, syrup, yeah, could be. Yeah. I've I've heard that as well that it's less mm. that and maybe agave, but I could be wrong. On that one. Time to move to Vermont, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> or, I mean, there or, are several yeah. things that uh, the last thirty years people have said that uh, can help lower your 
your blood sugar, like uh, chromium and, uh, well, pot oil uh, mm -hmm. and uh, some uh, some spices. But the I think the secret is you have to, uh, your blood sugar can't be too high already. And there, I think there's a line yeah. that if your blood sugar is already like above 200 or something or 250, it's not going to do much for you because uh, it has to be like 150 or 180 or something. Uh, Wasn't there something about licorice and dandelions? Uh, yes. Just to use, use that, yeah? Yeah. Uh, that's been around for years that uh, people mm -hmm. have tried using that too. So you have to get all, the extract really concentrated and, and sometimes... It, you know, it, it may lower your blood sugar, but it's not in a it's not a very safe thing to do uh, regularly because mm -hmm. you don't want you don't want a bunch of cinnamon my, um, at once. Yeah. My but, diabetic nurse suggested replacing the sugar. Well, she said get rid of sugar, but then she said if you want, you you can try uh, raw honey as a replacement because apparently raw honey mm -hmm. is meant to help stimulate insulin or something as well. Yeah, I read that too. Effects, so. Yeah, so I, I, get... I use it. And my my diabetic numbers are low all the time now. With me, yeah. of course. Yeah, honey is great. Raw honey. I get the yeah. that expensive manuka honey from New Zealand. Yeah. That, yeah, and it's it's delicious. But you know, it depends on the batch you get, and it also uh, supposedly it it kills viruses. You know. Well, so if it's not pasteurized, yeah, it's really good for your throat, like as a cough syrup. Yeah, it is. It really is. Yeah. Uh, I have some right here, as a matter of fact. Doing doing Paula Page uh <laughs> uh, screws. But Excuse I got this stuff and it's it's okay. really uh, every time I have a tickle in my throat or something, like mm -hmm. I feel like I'm coming down with a sore throat mm -hmm. or it's really dry during the winter, I just take a little smidgen of that. And uh, you know, well, it feels much better. It's good if you have a frog in your throat, right? A frog in your throat, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, uh, you know, I don't smoke seven packs a day. I eat them. So uh, well, that's Rod, another Rod, cigarette problem. Rod Serling smoked Oasis uh, cigarettes, according to Professor John. So, Or at least that's the commercials on the Twilight Zone, which is on tonight at 9.30. I'll just throw that in there. Eastern. Um, okay, so uh, chairman of the board, uh, Lane, who 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 are our next guests? And and you guys are going to stay for a little bit, are you, Jim and Martha? We may stick around. I think we have to, we also have to go eat uh, at the moment, right. I believe. Should, well, be, okay, stick around, but, but at the same time, thank you so much. That was very entertaining. Thank you. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. And I, I learned so much about, about melons um and 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 from joe too as well <laughs> so <laughs> it's just awesome who's our next guest there lane would you like me to would you like to tell me who it is first so i know sure it's two professors right okay yes it's the two professors would you like me to tell you in a board manner because i'm chairman of the board i want christopher <laughs> hitchens to tell us who our professors oh, are i'll have to i'll have to do that with a picture I need to hide behind a picture. Oh, I, I, I. Dude. Do you want me to, um, should we stop recording and then record? No, I'm just going to, I'm going to do it in a board manner. I changed my name to chairman of the board for a reason. Anyway. <laughs> it's, uh, who's next? Um, well, you know, I don't know. I'm bored. Oh, okay. It's, um, is it the professors or something? Well, I was wondering if Professor John can give me co-host, please. Board. So, so I, I did can board. pin <clears throat> John. Certainly, Walter. I thought I had done that. Uh, yeah, but I came back because a tornado knocked me out. Uh, oh, tornado. <laughs> Same tornado that the Travis is experiencing in um, Texas? Well, Texas? Uh, I'm in Texas North in Alberta, right? So really North Texas, yeah. North, North The Texas. vaccine knocked him out. That's right. Um, oh, well, thank you very much for giving me co-host. Uh, 
<laughs> Let me find you now. Uh, oh, there he is. Okay, we got one. Okay. We have, we have John. And I'm gone now. Geez, we're really bad at this, aren't we? Why would anybody well, this watch is this? Our, this is our first show, Walter. you got to give us a little uh, slack here. Okay. Yeah, now I get what we're doing. I'll be better prepared next time. Well, there you go. We're guys. doing it live. You got you to step up a little bit. So we have uh, Professor John and <laughs> Professor Ann Lee. Are you, are you there? Are you going to show us the camera today? or? Oh, there she is. Can you... Can you either get a telephone book or put your camera lower? <laughs> <laughs> Just jack up your house a few feet. That's yeah. All. yeah you... that's for me that's, well, that's great. So, hey, it's our segment of the professors. I'm very, very honored uh, to be a co-host in, in, in this. And uh, I don't argue with John much, but he's usually wrong when I argue. No, I'm... I'm just kidding there, John. And Professor Ann Lee, thank you so much. Professor Ann Lee writes a column for the Daily Cost, KOS, and I read it every day. It's under the the uh, the name Annie Lee in the Daily Cost, and it's about Ukraine. And Professor John's a political scientist teacher, and I'm I'm right, right? I'm, I'm yes, hundred yes, percent right. And we lost um, Ann Lee. So oh no. <laughs> Come back. That was fast. That was fast. So uh, internet problems all over. The, that tornado in Texas, John, is just creating havoc, eh? It is going from North Texas to Alberta to... Uh, you're in Alberta, right? I am. North Texas. Yeah. North right. Texas, Alberta. That's right. And also Connecticut. It's getting around the country. Oh, it is. What about Massachusetts, John? It isn't here yet. Okay. Well... Yeah. Well, there she is. There's... Oh, is she back? Professor oh, just one thing about the cooking techniques I'm doing. Yeah, let's let's put uh, you I'm, back on screen here, yeah. Joe, and then you could talk yeah. about it while we wait for Ann Lee. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, oh, Joe. So I'm I'm doing the uh, bitter melon tofu. I'm actually frying the tofu a little bit, not too much, and then I'll be blanching blanching the, uh, the bitter melon so that it removes a bit of the uh, a bit extra bitterness from it and then i'll saute the rest of the dish and make, mix it with a sauce make a little sauce is, is it going to be is it going to be ready by the end of this program joe i, I think it'll be ready in about um, 10 minutes okay Could be uh, can we get um can we get a shot of you uh trying it oh yeah okay i i had a question for joe about the tofu Mm -hmm. uh, does every piece of the tofu have to be in the shape of an isosceles triangle or can they be scaling? Uh, well, you can or, have... That's you can a diversify. good question. Okay. I mean, you don't have to be so rigid, but if you notice, I cut Those are right triangles. quite similar. You, oh. you try to make similar shapes. So if you're cutting... He said all the shapes, triangles have to have three sides. <laughs> or Julianne. Geez, we lost Anne again. Uh, hopefully, she comes back. So you might need to put yourself. Make sure all the doors are open between oh. you and the toilet, Ed John. Oh my John. God, it's bitter. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Make sure all the doors are open between me and the what? No, him, oh. not Joe. Uh, make oh, sure the Joe. doors are open between. Well, Between I want you to. I'd like to see you. You bring your kids in and try. Uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd like video of that. That would be good. Yeah, you want to watch people in your children. That's they're right. not. Uh, they're not too keen on the interwebs exposure. Okay. <laughs> well, well, John, John, Professor John, mm. medical scientist, teacher. What would you like to talk about today? Well, and, I'd like. And, to oh, oh, sorry. Yep. Can I no. just preface it? Every time we talk to you, you, you tend to to PBS it or Voice of America it. So can you you raise it up a little bit? You know, Al Jazeera. It. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Go ahead, John. What oh, would you okay. like to talk about, sir? 
Well, I'd like to talk about the uh, the debt ceiling crisis in the United States, which is uh, coming to a head. Uh, it's we fucked. are un unlike any other uh, nation. Uh, we instituted this thing called a debt ceiling. So after our legislature, or national legislature, the Congress, uh, you know, decides to spend money, uh, that's usually enough for most countries. Uh, if the if the legislature passes spending, then the country can spend that money and move on from there. But not in the United States. Uh, we 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 pass uh, spending bills, and and then when we we heard we reach a certain uh, national debt level, uh, we have this thing called the the debt ceiling. So for money that's already been spent or allocated. Um, we, if we trigger this, this, uh, threshold the, and we don't raise it, then we technically default on our debt, which could cause all sorts of havoc because the United States has such an important role in the world economy. Um, so the, uh, the Biden administration has promised not to be taken hostage by the Republicans in the Republican controlled House of Representatives over this issue. Uh, and they said, we will Bullshit. not neg negotiate. They, they want to have a clean debt ceiling bill that just raises the debt ceiling like we've done 30 plus times uh, in our history. Uh, but of course, Democrats being Democrats, uh, they've uh, apparently altered that position. And they are negotiating with Republicans now. So congressional Republicans who now refuse to pass a clean debt ceiling increase voted on three separate occasions under President Donald Trump to raise the debt ceiling without any preconditions or um, other policies attached. And this has always been the case in the past, right? When Republican president, the Republicans vote to raise the debt ceiling but we have a democratic uh president now so they've taken a different tack uh now they threaten the uh full faith and credit of the united states and our treasury secretary uh, janet yellen has warned that it could produce an economic and financial catastrophe uh those are her words and could occur as soon as june 1st which is uh what is that about two weeks from now yeah Strange. so uh the republicans in the house passed the bill last month that would raise the nation's borrowing limit into next year only for one year uh in exchange for freezing spending at last year's levels for a decade which would lead to cuts of an average of 18 percent so by freezing uh, spending levels at last year's uh, level, what, what they're actually doing is cutting the budget because as inflation and the cost of things go up and as the population grows in the United States, the amount to maintain the same level of services and programs uh, goes up naturally every year, but they want to freeze it. So it's actually a cut. And... Um yeah, go ahead. Sorry. So uh, if it's frozen at last year's levels, weren't last year's levels higher than the year before because of COVID? They were higher than the year before, yeah. So, but it's the inflation you take into account. It'll be less than last year's. Right. I, and they I'm wanna, just curious. They want to freeze it for a decade. Oh, dude. Yeah. Right. I, <laughs> so, I got one word, Russian rubles, two words, ah. 12 cents on the dollar. So, oh, yes. Um, well, this could threaten our currency. You know, if the United States actually defaults for the first time in history uh, over this really non-issue, it's, it's just a uh, something that should never have existed and doesn't exist in, as far as I know, any other country. Um but there's an ultra conservative group in the House of Representatives called the Freedom Caucus. And they said yesterday uh, that 
the Republicans should pass the bill that they passed last month as is. They said, no more discussion on watering it down, the group said in a tweet, period. So you've got this group of Republicans who are, you know, dead set against making any kind of negotiation uh, as to cutting, you know, how much to cut in social spending. They want to cut a lot. Mm. And um, the former president, uh, Donald Trump, weighed in today and he said um, Republicans should not make a deal on the debt ceiling unless they get everything they want. Do not fold. He, he tweeted in all caps, or I guess he didn't tweet it. He did this on True Social. Um, yeah. So you've got a lot of uh, intrans- intransigence on the uh, Republican side. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of weak bellies on the Democratic side. Mm-hmm. So basically what they want to do is, you know, take this, um, take some more uh, money away from uh, average Americans uh, so they can balance the budget or not, not, not even balance them, but just stop the, uh, the debt from going up. So uh, can I, can I just understand this? So the, the, yep. the budget's been approved. There's just no money left and the Republicans want cuts to the budget. Well, there's plenty of money left. That's the thing. Uh, We issue our own currency. So, uh, you know, in theory, uh, we have as much money as we need. Right. Um, But the Republicans want cuts in order to release the money to pay for. Well, what they want to do, we we have this arbitrary spending cap, which is currently at uh, 31.4 trillion uh, in national debt. Right. So um, if we don't raise that cap, like we had 30 times in the past over, Mm -hmm. you know, three or four decades now, um, if we don't do that, then we'll be in default. You got to be like Canada and just print it. You know, it's just Hiroshi. It's just, yeah. <laughs> you just print it. So if I remember right, uh, Obama reached the same thing where the Republicans wanted to um, uh, take away social security um, programs and that sort of thing. And if I remember right, Bernie Sanders shamed him in the, and stopped him, right? And I think Bernie Sanders is advocating the 14th Amendment to be used now. Could, could you explain that? Yes. So the 14th, Section 4 of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. Uh, let's see if I can find the um, precise language here. Uh, yeah states that the validity of the public debt of the United States shall not be questioned. So having an an arbitrary debt ceiling, which Mm -hmm. does indeed question uh, the public, the validity of the public debt of the United States, uh, does seem to be on its face unconstitutional, given this provision in the 14th Amendment. So what progressives and many other people are advocating uh, the president do is simply say uh, the debt ceiling provision is unconstitutional and uh, it should be ignored and carry on with uh, spending as we have been and as the Congress had passed legislation to do. Um would that be a Supreme Court challenge then? I'm sure it would be challenged uh, in the courts. Uh, in the meantime, uh, you know, the administration could simply say, this is what we're going to do. And if the Supreme Court of the United States, uh, which is composed of nine people, uh, wants to say, no, you can't do that, uh, then they will be causing the first ever default of the United States on its debt. Well, uh, does the Supreme Court want to be responsible for that action and the consequences that unfold from that? I would say no, but you see, 
you'd have to have an administration that would play hardball and say, uh, you know, this is what the Constitution says. This is what we're doing. We're going to pay our debts. Let's stop this nonsense. And and there are other measures that could be taken, um, such as uh, the the Treasury has the right to um, to print uh, to uh, to mint a uh, trillion dollar uh, platinum coin, or it could be multi trillion dollar platinum coin, mm -hmm. uh, which could be placed uh, on deposit in the Federal Reserve, and this. Uh, would also uh, get us around the debt ceiling. But uh, for whatever reason, the administration is, seems to be hesitant to, uh, to want to do that. You could also sell Alaska to Canada. We'll, we'll fund you. <laughs> I'm just saying. You got, you got a lot of cash on hand up there? No, I actually no. It all, it, yeah, it all goes down to the States. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> July 31st is gone. There's a big sucking sound out of Canada. Uh, <laughs> That's her cash. Um, Joe, Joe, you, you were showing us something. Um, sorry, John. So oh, almost finished here. We just um <laughs> Joe's pretty annoying, annoying, ain't he, John? We have oh, the shaky cam, shaky cam going on. Shaky cam, yeah, you're your... shaky cam. We're gonna, we're gonna lose our appetite for that bitter melon, Joe. Yeah, that race looks not bad, or whatever it is. Is that sesame seed? <laughs> shaky yeah. camera. Shaky. This is the this is the brown rice. So and what's what the you can problem? Do... I have a question, really quick, about printing more money. Sure, you what? could put you could put your hand up, and we'll we'll like. Uh, yeah, we'll... I don't I don't believe in that, but to you know, uh, <laughs> to make go ahead, you go ahead, happy, ask, ask I'll raise my, How's that? But is that better, Walter? Do you yes. like that? Well, okay. Yeah, Lexi has a question for John. As soon as Joe just finishes uh, what he was saying, go ahead, Joe. Um, when you're cooking your rice, you can throw a piece of kombu seaweed in there. That'll add a little bit of naturally occurring MSG. Oh, okay. okay, that's cool. That's very important. It's also great when you put it in your beans, and this is also very helpful in boosting okay. up the uh, flavor uh, side. And for those who have uh, heart issues, if you substitute one third MSG to two thirds salt, you can reduce, or even up to half and half, you can reduce your salt intake. Right. It's very helpful. Sounds good. Now, don't, Joe, don't listen to the propaganda against MSG. Got it. Joe, Joe, can we let Lexi talk now? Are you okay with that? Well, sure. I'm just going to present the food if we want to finish and do that, and then we'll sure. get into the bitterness. Yes, it'll be exciting. Okay. I am so sorry, Lexi. You go ahead, dear. I yep. forgot what I was going to say. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You were going to say, what if we default? Okay, or what if we print more money? <laughs> I think you're right. I think that's that was what I was going to say. Thank you. Darn it. I am so sorry, Lexi. You I want to, to hear you. Short term memory loss. My bad. No, it's okay. So, what so what, what's preventing us from quote unquote printing more money is. Uh, is the debt ceiling and saying that we, uh, because of the way our, our the Federal Reserve is structured, when we uh, print more money, we're issuing bonds in order to do that. And that is taking out more debt. So uh, we can't take out any more debt if we continue to recognize this debt ceiling, because supposedly we have reached the limit that has been arbitrarily imposed on ourselves. Um, so that's why we need to, to raise the debt ceiling so that we can uh, issue more bonds and uh, quote unquote, uh, increase borrowing in order to pay our debts. What do you think is going to happen, John? I think they're, they'll get a deal. Um, they may just kick this down the road, uh, you know, in the short term. Mm -hmm. uh, they could do it for a couple of months. They could do it for a year, but then we're going to be back right where we were 
uh, again. I mean, what I want to know is why didn't the Democrats, when they saw that the Republicans were going to take the House of Representatives in the last election, uh, why didn't they uh, uh, pass a bill, because they control both the Senate and the House, mm -hmm. that would have um, eliminated the, the debt ceiling back when the, uh, mm. they had control of the Congress? That's you true. know, this this wouldn't have been an issue. But now here we are. It's causing all sorts of turmoil and potential catastrophe in the financial markets. Um, but it could have been resolved that way. Right. Uh, I, we I, I like the foresight, John. Come on. <laughs> it, it was only a few months away. It wasn't like it was, you know, five years away. Yeah, yeah. that's that's asking a lot. <laughs> okay. Well, I see Lexi has a question. Lexi, you go ahead. And I'm sorry, I'm a bad host. I apologize. No, you're fine. I'm just confused. What backs up our money right now? Like, what gives our dollar its worth or its value? Oh, good question. The ability for the government to uh, tax the citizenry mm -hmm. and, and the productive capacity of the economy. So you can tax corporations you can tax individuals uh there are other sources of revenue but but those are the uh, principal ones and uh depending on which measure you look at uh, you know we have the first or second largest economy in the world and uh we have tremendous uh, capacity to meet our debts um uh, unless of course we impose these absurd restrictions on ourselves um okay. you know that yeah. causes this kind of havoc does that answer so, lexi oh go ahead lexi so raising raising the debt ceiling would not lower the value of the american dollar is that not, correct not necessarily no right okay okay All right. well i don't see the problem uh, but 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 I but I think what one needs to appreciate is that this is all theatrics, as John was pointing out. The prior administration, this wasn't; it was used as a a threat. But these are, uh, and I hate to say that they're empty threats, but they truly are empty threats because you know. And this is why the uh, some Democratic senators just decided to announce to the a consideration of the Fourteenth Amendment is to really you know, call them, call their bluff on these kinds of absurd things built around essentially a theoret the theatrical stunt, which they do, which comes around every, you know, budget cycle. It's just uh, it's just a game. It it attempts to to demonstrate to the public and to the constituents that they're doing something. They're not really doing anything. It's like dad going around the house, turning off the lights, saying, why is all the lights on in the house? Exactly. exactly. Gonna, our electricity bill is going to be high and saying, whatever. You better eat your food or all those people in China are going to starve. Eat your bitter melon. That's what we say. <laughs> this is all leaving me with a bitter taste in my mouth and it hasn't even got here. <laughs> are you eating it, Joe? He's Don't. thinking about it, Walter. Okay. He's, he's, that answers my question. Thank you, Professor John and Walter. Good question. Oh, thank, Lexi, you, Lexi. thank you. Yeah. yeah. And he's doing Yelp Yelp work here. Uh Joe. And is... thank you, Professor and Lee as well. <laughs> uh James uh humans, you have a question. You go ahead, my friend. Yeah, we were talking about this a little bit last night. And mm -hmm. was it last night? I can't remember. Um and what I heard, what I had read and also heard from the New York Times when they were talking about this, and I don't know if it's true, it's just what I heard is, you know, if we do just issue this trillion dollar coin or whatever, and, and or basically in, enact the 14th Amendment and say, all right, we're doing it, we're paying, you know, we're, we're borrowing more money um, without legislation, the concern is when we borrow more money, when we authorize increased debt, somebody has to buy that debt. It's my understanding, unless I'm wrong. Um, and the concern is the the uh, the creditor, the people who would be purchasing the debt, um, might question whether without without 
um, legislative authority, that debt would get repaid. And the concern or the fear is that they would thus then charge a much higher interest rate for that debt. Now, I don't know enough. I'm not, I am no, I am absolutely no uh, economist on this at all, but that was the concern of just blowing through it and saying, um, uh, uh, you know, not doing it through the legislature, but just uh, doing it through an executive brand, you know, basically having Biden tell Janet Yellen, go ahead, borrow more money. Um, that was, and, and maybe someone can explain that better, uh, who has a better understanding than I do. Well, the, the, in other countries, you know, the decision to to spend more money is made by the legislature. And the decision has been made by the legislature of the United States, the Congress, to spend that money. Uh, but we then we also have this other thing called a debt ceiling. Right. Uh, um, that uh, mo- I don't know of any other countries that do this. Uh, that have has this maximum, and we in the past we've always just raised, kept raising and raising it. You know, it's, it's just it doesn't mean anything, uh, and it only means something if you don't raise it, uh, and then it'll cause a problem because we'll be defaulting on our debt. All about but, checks and balances, John. Checks and balances. <laughs> well, the <laughs> checks and balances are still there. You still need the president to sign it. You still need it to go through both houses of Congress. 100%. Uh, you know, but um, you, you're concerned that at some point creditors to the United States will say, well, wait a minute, you know, the debt of the United States is getting so large that maybe they'll have difficulty paying it back. Um, and that is possible. But I would just say that our debt in relation to the size of our GDP, that is to the size of our economy Mm -hmm. as measured by the GDP, uh, is uh, smaller than some other countries. For example, Japan. You know, Japan, uh, their debt to uh, GDP uh, ratio, uh, I believe they have two and a half times the, the their debt is two and a half times the size of their uh, GDP, where ours is, I think, what, what 1.2. Um, and we're a much larger country. Uh, 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 we have the reserve currency of the world. I mean, there are all sorts of uh, indications that we could issue considerably more debt and people would still uh, loan us money. Mm-hmm. And the reason for this is that it w- you don't consider the United States in a vacuum. You compare it to other countries. Uh, you know, are are, are you going to uh, trust your money with Russia? Are you going to buy Russian government bonds? Are those more stable than say right, the United so States? The, where I, where else are you going to go? Is the idea right? I mean, we're the you know the the. <laughs> The cleanest uh, shirt among uh, many dirty ones, right? What is that expression? That, that they are you are you, are you okay with that, James? We have some more questions, so yeah. No, I mean, good. Thank uh, Professor yes, John. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> good question, though. No, but James, I think that is important. I mean, and and what I didn't mention, which I think is absolutely critical is that why are we here? Why is the debt of the United States pretty large uh, compared to our historical uh, levels? Because um, we don't want to tax the poor rich people because then that, they wouldn't like That's that. exactly right. We have been cutting And, and as someone who is president. going to be a millionaire someday, I don't want to be taxed either. <laughs> yeah, we Billionaire. Have been... Actually, no, I'm going to be a billionaire. That's my plan. Okay. Richie the, Rich. The, the U.S. has been reducing its tax revenues since yeah. the 1980s dramatically. So Reagan did this. Bush did this. Well, there you go again, blaming me. 
<laughs> multiple times, you know, reduce taxes. Trump did this, you know, yeah. they keep cutting no, right, right. the it, revenues of the, of, course. of the country and saying, we don't have any money. Well, gee, maybe you should not cut the taxes of rich people, which is primarily right. whose taxes they're cutting. Maybe you shouldn't do that. Maybe we should go back well, to the tax levels we they, had. Right. They all know, pray at the altar of, of Grover Norquist and have right. taken that pledge. Which and, and, and he wants to murder the federal government. He wants to drown it in a bathtub. Yeah, that was his say, expression. Let's, let's be clear, it's drown in a bathtub. Yes. Speaking of murder, Joe is going to eat the gourd. Uh Joe. Eat the gourd. Eat the gourd. Yes, okay. sir. Okay, so. What do you think? What do you think, Joe? It's not fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but is it it's edible this time. I think this is the first time I've made it where I'll finish the dish. But it is super bitter. Scraping out the insides is very important. Boiling it in water and blanch it basically washes it out a bit, mm -hmm. but and it leaves it with a really nice, <clears throat> really nice texture. Um, kind of uh, what's the word? So, or so those are your some... secrets, Joe, to making it barely edible. Yes, okay, <laughs> great, great. You know, it is op it is an option, right, not to include the bitter melon in this dish, and it would it would probably be fantastic, right? It's pretty good. Joe. That's true, but then I mean, <laughs> can't enjoy everything. So, is this healthy for you? Do you think the bitter gourd is going to be oh, healthy? Yeah. For you? Clean you right out your absolutely uh, arteries. Uh, okay. it, apparently, it reduces it drastically reduces your your um, glucose level. Oh, glucose. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, so people who are on certain types of of medicine might be warned about eating it because it could, right, it could fuck with their medicine. So, I really want you to cook blowfish next week, uh, Joe. Okay. I I think that it, uh, Joe. Thank you so much for we, cooking that. That looks um, that that vegan blowfish. We yeah. we we do keep vegetarian around here. <laughs> okay, you got her, man. You got her. Uh, Daniel, Daniel, you have a question? Oh, Professor Ann, I hope she comes back. Anyways. Hey, I got a couple really basic questions. Okay. Um, who exactly is the debt owed to, and what is the fear perceived or real if we default on it? Yeah, John. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, if we default on our debt, then uh, all the people who have loaned the federal government money, uh, this could be individuals. Uh, for example, if you have your, uh, uh, you can get a treasury direct account where you buy direct obligations of the federal government in the, ter in the form of uh, uh, treasury bills, notes, and bonds. Uh, you could, uh, th they have things called I bonds, which, uh, stands for inflation adjusted bonds uh there there are different debt instruments that you could buy directly from the federal government um and if they default on their debt then and, and your bill or your bond comes due they can't pay you so that money you were expecting to get from the government uh and the, the interest that they uh are due you um might not be paid and if you are depending on that to, if you're a businessman meeting payroll, or if you're a uh, retiree, uh, you, you know, that you count on this as your day, as your monthly income or part of it, uh, that causes a lot of problems in the economy, right? So the people don't have money to buy groceries with or pay their mortgage or whatever it is. Uh, also, there are financial institutions that buy huge amounts of these obligations because they're considered to be the safest in the world or among the safest in the world. Um, and sorry, go. yeah, if they don't 
get their interest payments or their principal return from the U.S. government because the U.S. government has defaulted, uh, that can cause a cascade of problems throughout the economy. You know, they were depending on that money to uh, be able to pay bills that they owe or to uh, pay interest on loans that they have uh, taken out. Okay. Is there another question, Daniel? Well, yeah, I mean, I guess I wanted to go to my first question. I mean, that, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, if we could shorten up the question, that would be great. There's somebody else behind you. We're running out of time. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. So I just wanted to kind of get clearer on who exactly the debt is owed to. I mean, I I think you kind of answered that. Yeah, Yeah, so it can be owed to people, uh, Americans. Uh, you know, a significant amount of it is owed to Americans, but it can also be owed to uh, people in other countries or governments uh, around the world, such as Japan, Saudi Arabia, China, uh, you know, all sorts of countries own U.S. Treasury bonds uh, because of the perceived safety and liquidity of those bonds. All right, uh, Daniel, you're good. Uh, yes, so thank you, thank you, John. Uh, Warren, my friend, um, are you going to give us some wisdom or just a question? Wisdom. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, my friend. Go ahead. All right. So a majority of the, as John was saying, a majority of the debt is owned by us. It's probably about anywhere between sixty and seventy percent of it is owned by owned by us. Sovereign wealth or sovereign wealth funds, pension funds, the whole nine yards, hedge funds. It's considered the most liquid asset in the world. Are you guys the richest country in the world, Warren? Uh next to Saudi. That's man. that that's de- that's debatable. I don't know. Um mm-hmm. Ian Lee. I think I think we are. Like we sure have the largest economy, and China's right next to us. Mm-hmm. I think China beat us out this year. Is China like it's like twenty nine trillion or something like that? Fair We're enough. like twenty six trillion. I didn't. I didn't mean to get you. Economy, I so. didn't mean to get you off track. So continue. Sorry. Um. All right. Also, um, the thing about the about the debt is, um, there was something that John said earlier that I was going to respond to. Um, I'm trying to figure out, remember what it was, but. It was it was something about 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 the debt in terms that we issue the currency we don't um, so therefore we're never going to run out of it. like we can always sell assets we can sell um, assets in order in order to do it like that new um, Stephanie Kelton's book is phenomenal by the way it's, it talks all about the debt and everything that's going on with it and it's like saying how. We are mistaken in terms of, in terms of what as 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 Andy Lee was saying it's a, it's a um it's all a it's all a game so yep Stephanie Kelton she's the MMT person she was hired by Bernie um and she would when she was on the Senate Finance Committee um eight years ago I guess it was fifteen sixteen um. So it she, she was talk, she would ask all this all the senators that, that were on the committee how they viewed the economy and she'd explain how the, how they were wrong. It's right. like from the MMT perspective, the, it's much better way of viewing the economy. So okay. you I'm have to get, think about what's 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 valuable. Fair um, enough. Fair enough, Warren. Uh, st- um, uh, she has a podcast too, doesn't she, Stephanie Kelton? I think so. Right. Yes. Uh, um, can everybody right. take a look at Joe's uh, dishes before we take it off? Isn't that uh, that that was his ingredients he used to make uh, something that you probably don't want to eat? So uh, good going, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Joe. Thank you so much. That that's uh, part of it. Looks uh, just fantastic. I, I think fantastic, Joe. this was uh, for me. I think I've, I've got a new leash on my. It was uh, it makes me a, a a little less bitter, knowing that I was able to stomach this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> definitely make it again. It was, this was the best the best time I've had. Maybe. Well, it, the, uh... I can't believe um, 
the stuff that you ate before to make this taste good that you would do it again so good on you joe you're a mm. great man and um and thank you from norway thank Thanks. you all right take care man <laughs> he's just that did you want to comment on that uh john or are we good no, I, I I think we're good. Um, I, um, I I I would just say yeah that um, modern monetary theory uh, is another way of looking at the economy and this whole question of uh, what uh, debt means and uh, you know how you can run an economy uh, by looking at um, money and debt differently than we have in the past. Uh, you know, the basic proposition is that uh, you don't need taxes to fund the government. Right. Uh, you need taxes to reduce inflation. So if you issue too much money, uh, if the uh, economy is overheated, uh, then you can tax in order to slow down the economy uh, and to... Uh, remove money from circulation okay so it's a totally it's a different way of of looking That's at things mmt a, theory right yes mmt yeah Mo modern monetary theory okay. john's right we got to go back to the gold standard <laughs> <laughs> yeah i would they not actually, recommend John that no. I, they actually I, have a they have a textbook that's written by randall ray and bill mitchell these are both eminent economists that have been in the been in the mmt game for probably 30 years. Warren Mosler is considered the father of um, MMT. That's the one, he's the one that taught Kelton. He was a Wall Street um, banker way back in the day. So, Warren, thank you. All the MMT people. Right. And do you have I, some, some last well, words to say? Yeah. I know we ran into your time. Well, uh, it's not my time. It's okay. Uh, it's it's uh, a collective me... time. It's a collective time. Let me recommend uh, the pod podcast Money on the Left, which uh, covers uh, MMT issues, among other things. I, okay. The, the point of all of this and what we're trying to represent here is that we don't have to capitulate to the normal um, business press, the br business journalism, because that frames – Unfortunately, too many of the kinds of messages, many of you are familiar with watching um, CNBC or Fox Business. I mean, these are infomercials. These are they're touting various things relative to stock markets and not so much about other things like institutional elements or bonds or whatever. And they never tell people what the what really is going on. All they do is um, give you the current score of the horse race. And th this is one of the biggest problems for people to understand that there is a much deeper discourse and that all of this, you know, messing around, as I mentioned before, is is very um, fictional in the sense that it's not false necessarily, but it does have a lot of disinformation built into it. So um, I think we'll do one in the future on trying to work through some of what you need to do when you look at uh, some basic media like that. Um, can I mention that I miss the professors and I love you guys very much for this, for, for, for doing this. And thank you so much. Um, thank you, Walter. Nice thank to you. hear the professors um, in, in real time. Um, so we're going to run into twilight zone if we're not careful here. And we have at 11 o'clock an interview that they have, to, we have to kind of be on time. So, um, Rick, are, are, I thought we had a, a Limbaugh thing planned or we're not doing it. That's on Saturday mornings. No, 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 babe. That's something else. Uh, <laughs> Vamos a la playa. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, anyways. Um, Is it cringe thought, already? Was Jay, no. Was James ready for that? I'll have to go get into character. One moment. All right. Um, John, <laughs> Professor John. No one told me about this, Walter. Plug, plug the reading. We need somebody to plug the reading. Was oh, any, yeah. was, There's was, meeting was, was, was it, tomorrow. Please was go. Any, was Thanks. anybody at the production meeting? Uh. <laughs> you didn't invite me. I would have been there if you invited me. Okay. We, we which, won't do that. Which meeting is this? Uh, yeah. Apparently, we're well, not invited. 
well let's let, let's try to get through this uh we have 10 minutes and um but now someone summoned me from the grave i'd like to know who it was whoa hey rush how you doing buddy what hey i i heard i was uh look i don't have a lot of time i've got to get back to a poker game with richard nixon and strom thurman strom's dead but oh yeah yeah so are you do they got internet in hell I, I'm just curious. Blazing speed. You wouldn't believe it. It's the best. Uh, CompuServe. Perhaps you've heard of it. Yes, back in my Commodore days. CompuServe. Yeah. Well, it's just fantastic. I, I'm able to get the news. You wouldn't believe it. It's all Fox all the time. I pity you. I I, I, I really do. <laughs> all right. Hey, are you going to take Tucker's spot now that he's gone? Take, take Tucker. He took it from me. He took, Look. I don't know anything about that little twerp. Quite frankly, he asked me to come over to his house one day. I, I came over there. We were, uh, he says, you want to go out shooting in my backyard? I said, sure, let's go shoot it. He wants to shoot paintball guns. Paintball guns. I'm telling you, it was just, um, it's just not not I'm, manly. It doesn't, it doesn't feel American. That's not American. I tell you what I used to do, me and, uh, me and Epstein, we used to fly down to the Caribbean and we would just go shooting little boys on the beach. Now that's true America. Well, I bet you, I bet you, I bet you he, uh, he was drinking Bud Light too as well, right? Bud Light, you're not wrong about that. He is a kind of Bud Light man, but you know, he would never admit it on television, but hey, I'm not here to spill secrets about the news. I'm here to talk to, uh, to the good fine people before time runs out. Listen, people, they're going to tax and spend. It's time that the debt ceiling is lowered. Lowered, I say. They're just spending it on too many frivolous art projects. Piss Christ. What is this? Anyways, people, before I get back to the clubhouse, I want you to all remember, vote Republican until you die. Was there anything else? I, I guess not. Rush, um, I'm, I'm very impressed that coming back from the dead, you can uh, you can talk to us and uh, create your usual havoc. So, uh, so good on you. We have Dave. Dave, and... Um, would you like to say something to Rush Limbaugh before we send him on his way? Oh, I wanted to know which which Rush is worse, the uh, Rush Limbaugh or the band from Canada? Screw you, Dave. Screw you. Yeah, which you is know, worse? back in my rock and roll days, I used to play Rush on the radio, and I tell you, I found it uh, just to be incomprehensible garbage. Well, yeah, yeah, it's a it's an acquired taste. Look through their back catalog. Okay, boss. Uh, look, I've got a mountain of oxycontin to go take. I don't have time for this anymore. Okay, jump around. <clears throat> Thank you, Rush. You take care. And this yes, is goodbye. <laughs> this has been the Autonomous uh, uh, Collective After Hours. Look for our link in the description. You'll get our newsletter, and you can join the Zoom group. And I, I think you'll enjoy it. Mm -hmm.